The wrong principles emerging from the summit, in our view, should mark a radical shift. People, people, planet and shared prosperity have to unambiguously come first as basis of global production and supply chain before profit of a few corporations. Public services are central to running more jobs and inclusive societies. They also provide a multi-sectoral bedrock for pre prevention, preparedness, and response. Cuts in public funding, trade liberalization, and privatization over the last few decades have hollowed out the public sector. This undermined pandemic preparedness and response when COVID-19 came calling. Governments have to rededicate to properly funding quality public services, including universal public health systems. This should be reinforced from international trade agreements. Globally, we are strongly of the view that trade rules reforms need to be put in place to ensure regionalization of global supply chains and domestic production as much as possible of key medical equipment, devices, and supplies such as PPEs. Two, reversal of free trade in health and other public services. These are not commodities. They are public goods and our global funds. Three, waiver of patent rights should be automatically triggered with the consideration of an outbreak as a public health emergency of international concern by the World Health Organization. And probably even before them, but built into the IHR, such that our trade rules, that, that is how, concretely speaking, the One Health approach, all of society, all of government approach can take concrete form as we have learned bitterly from what uh, is the situation regarding vaccine apartheid in the current uh, moment. And finally, such waivers of trade-related intellectual property rights needs to be accompanied with sharing of know-how and technology and institutionalized structures for solidarity with the least developed countries based on multilateralism that are not reduced to charity. Thank you. I represent EPSU, the European Federation of Public Service Unions, including in health and social services in all EU and other European countries, both in public, non-profit and private sector. We're also a recognized EU social partner for the health and hospital sector and work with PSI, Public Service International, a global trade union federation representing 30 million workers. The representative trade unions of CGL, CISL and WIL in Italy uh, are members of us. Uh, there's much in the C20 statement, which was distributed before this meeting, we agree with. I concentrate on a number of points which are important uh, in addition. The key role of health and social care professionals and support staff needs to be recognized in the cooperation at all levels and in the principles. The pandemic has shown the impact on workers in health and care, mostly women and often with a migration background. Without workers, the human right to health cannot be delivered and pandemics cannot be dealt with. Uh, we need more transparency of data and reporting. There are many countries who do not report how many health, social care and other workers have died, for example. A second point, we need to recognize that preparedness is a health and safety issue from personal protective equipment to psychosocial risks to risk assessments and from the workplace to the sectoral and national and other levels. It needs mainstreaming. Also that in the principles. The trade unions need to be involved in effective consultation, for example, in stress tests to explore the resilience of our public and publicly funded health and social care systems. Third, we all know there's a lack of well-trained staff across many countries, also leading to brain drains. The principles should address recruitment and retention. A, by stressing the role of social dialogue, collective bargaining and trade union rights. B, it is a question of public funding and building up national public health and social protection systems. A and B are the basis of ensuring we have needs oriented staffing levels. My last point here in this session, commitments need to be followed up. For example, those of the World Health Organization High Level Commission on Health Employment and Economic Growth. And the summit is an excellent place to renew the mandate of this group.